What if I told you a tiny straw could completely change the way your voice feels and help you sing stronger, longer, and healthier? It's not magic, it's science, so let's break it down. Hey singers, I'm Whitney Nicole, singer, songwriter, vocal coach, studio owner, and creator of The Singing Straw, which helps singers like you create more balance, power, and ease in your singing voice. Today, we're going to talk about the science behind the singing straw and straw phonation, how and why it works, what it actually does to your voice as you're singing through it, and why that helps your voice work more efficiently. Quick little disclaimer, I'm making this video for those of you who are my fellow voice nerds wanting to get into the nitty gritty of why the straw works. If this starts to make you feel like your eyes are glazing over, like it's quite a bit too boring for you, feel free to fast forward and hit one of our exercise videos instead because the beauty of straw phonation is that you don't necessarily need to understand how it works to have it work in your voice. Now, before we dive into the physics of straw phonation, it's helpful to understand fundamentally how the voice is working when you're creating sound to sing or to speak. So your vocal folds are housed in your larynx, and that is right here inside of your throat. Now, some of you might feel a laryngeal prominence there, a little bump, if you will, but if everyone just gently puts their hands right here on their throat and swallow you'll feel a little bump move up and down. That is your larynx. And inside your larynx, you've got these tiny, very delicate, beautiful little vocal folds. Now what's happening when we sing or when we speak is that we are sending air up from our lungs out through that vocal tract, right? And we've got those vocal folds inside of the larynx that begin to oscillate or vibrate very fast, right? Sometimes hundreds, maybe even thousands of times a second, depending on the pitch that we're making or the sound, the frequency that we're creating. And so as those vocal folds vibrate, the air moves through those vocal folds and then it resonates out through our throat and our mouth to create sound. Now our bodies are pretty incredible in this way and this system is fundamental to how we show up in the world, right? How we express ourselves, but there are some tricky things that can come along with singing and speaking, right? So I'm sure everybody knows the feeling of losing your voice. So that's generally when our vocal folds get so swollen due to either a sickness or a virus or overuse, right? Maybe screaming, impact, right? Intensity can inflame those vocal folds. And then when they get stiff or puffy, they don't vibrate as smoothly. So we're not getting the sound that we're used to, or we lose our voice, if you will. And as singers, depending on our genre, we're using our voice in such a specific and if you will, like high level way that we're asking a lot of our voice, whether that's belting, riffing, super, super high notes, creating lots of power and sound like an opera singer, we're asking a lot of our voice. And so as we're that simple system I just described, the air through the vocal folds vibrating out through the resonator can become tricky and we can get caught in certain areas. That's where you feel things like cracks, strain, fatigue, and really what's happening there is our system isn't operating super efficiently. A lot of times that can come from the vocal folds vibrating in not the most efficient or effective um, coordination, if you will. They can get a little stiff or too heavy or too light, right? Other times that can be not enough airflow or air pressure, or that can just be our resonator, like our throat and our mouth, not working to boost or emphasize or support the sound as much as it possibly could be. And this is where straphonation is an absolute game changer. And I get it. There's a little skepticism. I had it myself. Like, what do you mean that this tiny little straw is going to make some big impact on my speaking, my singing, or my vocal health? But I tried it, and needless to say, it's changed my life. So I encourage you to give it a try yourself. So how do we actually use straw phonation or the singing straw to help support our voice? Well, it's pretty simple. You're just going to blow and create sound out through the straw like this. The simplest form of this is just a slide, right? Just moving through your range wherever it feels good. And you can get into much more complicated workouts. Check out some of our other videos where I dive into a lot of different applications of straw phonation. But today we're talking about the science. So what's actually happening when I'm blowing and singing through this straw? 
Well, what's happening is, is this narrow diameter here that our singing straw is, we've got a three millimeter singing straw original here, but singing straw has a couple of different sizes. Um, and what's happening with this super narrow diameter is it is partially obstructing the airflow that's coming out through our vocal tract. So we singing teachers have a term for this and voice scientists have a term for this. This is called an SOVT exercise. That stands for semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. So so a lot of singing exercises you might be familiar with fall into this category. If you're familiar with a lip trill, right, or humming, or zzz, or vv, anything that's kind of blocking that air partially can be categorized as an SOVT. Now, I like to say that straw phonation is sort of the mac daddy of SOVTs, the one that you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck with, and here's why. As I sing through this straw, the narrow diameter is partially blocking the airflow. So there's only three millimeters of space for all of the air that I'm sending out through my lungs and out through my vocal folds and my resonator to go through. So what happens with all of that energy that's being sent through this narrow diameter? Well, this is blocking that and it creates a back pressure, a resistance, if you will. That back pressure helps to create a more supportive environment for your entire vocal tract. It helps to lower the larynx, release tension, and expand and open the back of the throat. And even better, at the vocal fold level, it actually helps to realign those vocal folds so that they are oscillating or vibrating in a more efficient vibrational pattern. This is really where the magic lies. Because as singers, we don't actually get to see and make physical adjustments to our our body or our instrument in the same way that maybe an athlete might be able to change the way that they're swinging a bat or holding a golf club. We don't have that concrete physical ability to make change at our vocal fold level. So when we have a tool like the singing straw that can actually help to send energy to those vocal folds and optimize the way that they're coming together, it is just a game changer for how it improves and helps you find more ease in your singing. And if you haven't tried the singing straw yet, check out the link below and try it yourself and see. You'll feel a difference immediately. So to recap that science in plain English, when you sing through a narrow diameter straw specifically sized for singers like the singing straw, you are creating a back pressure in the vocal tract that helps your vocal folds vibrate more efficiently. And that in turn makes it easier for you to sing with power and balance and ease. Now to learn more about how to apply the singing straw in your voice to warm up faster, get rid of strain, improve your tone, improve your range, check out some of the other videos on our channel and make sure that you hit like and subscribe so that you know when our new videos come out. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And comment down below and let me know, are you brand new to the singing straw or have you been using it before? Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.